So, hello everyone. Today we are playing Dark Gothic Colonial Horror. Um, I have prepared the playing card. So this is the uh, mystery deck. I'm just going to give it a brief shuffle. I've shuffled it like 10 times before we went on air, so to speak. I've also got um, different uh, the different villains. Um, I will be playing with um, three, so basically as the rules dictate, one level one, one level two, one level three. Um, the game comes with <coughs> excuse me nine villains, three for each category. However, I do not play with the Gremian infestation because I just think it's a I mean, look at this artwork. This is just so crappy. I refuse to play. Um, with this villain. So let's see, we're gonna um, draw level three. Level two and level one. Sorry, that was wrong. So this is then level one. And we'll just do a roll because I don't even know which one is which. So one, two, that would be the top one. So this is now level three. Um, the rest go back into the box. Um, we have here five hero cards. Let's select one, two again. This is, oh, Thomas Harrow, Swarthy Courier. I've just played with him just now. Um, so I don't even have to change the starter deck because this is the deck that's perfect for him. So um, he's got four combat, one, two, three, four, four cunning, one, two, three, four, and four spirit. He has no honor, um, but he's got two abilities. Information, all allies cost you one um, <clears throat> less, um, and you decide which one, um, which one that is, um, which color. And secrets upon secrets, when drawing a shocking discovery, take two and choose which one to use. So I'm playing with one hero only, so I'm playing in complete solo mode. This is not how the game is designed, which is why I've made a couple of changes. The most recent one, which I haven't even tried out if this works, will be that any roaming um, villain that comes out as it moves along will actually destroy any non-minion card as it moves along so that you have an incentive um, other than just um, you know making sure that they don't up in the sh end up in the shadows to actually um, take them out. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got a starting hand and it's going to be terrible because it usually is with him. Yeah. It's a perfect... We won't be able to do much with this one. We've got two spirit, two cunning and two Okay, we've got a lightning strike. Smugglers. If I could reach, it's an event. Five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Restless dead. Okay, so <clears throat> what we've got here is um, six cards. That's the center line. And from this we can buy. Um, cards. So, um, <clears throat> we've got one lightning strike, which is an event, mystery, destroy any cards adjacent to lightning strike in the center line, then add this card to the shadows. This does not work um, when the lightning strike is, passed, is part of the initial um, <clears throat> layout. Okay, let's see. We have the Strigoi Vampire as our villain and it has no special abilities. Um, it's got four fight, three spirit to kill and all these cards are cursed. So basically when you play them, they get destroyed um, and put into the crypt, which we will be putting right over there. Um, we also have the Hungry Dead. That is essentially a common minion, which you can always fight. It has it takes one red, one blue, and one green to destroy. And as a result, you cannot acquire this card, but you get a benefit from it. You can either destroy a card you have played this turn if you want to thin out your deck, or you can um, destroy a card from the center line, except a minion or a card with a global effect. 
Now, you might want to do this if you want to get rid of a card that you really don't want in order to fill up uh, or to, 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 to fill up the center line with cards that you may want or may want to acquire. And also you can use it to, uh, to mess up your opponent's strategy. So let's see. <clears throat> um, Dr. Edwards is an ally and he requires two fight three cunning and one of any color that you choose. Now we're going to reduce his cost to two fight, two cunning and one strength of spirit and using the special ability of Thomas Harrow and we're going to acquire this card. So when you acquire a card what that means is you basically don't add it to your hand but you put it in your discard pile. Now, whenever you remove a card from the center line, you have to replace it immediately. Oh, that's going to be interesting. <clears throat> so, strength of spirit goes away. We end our turn. The minion here gets added to the shadows because it's a roaming minion. And this one roams one further. And we replace this card with an enchanted pistol. It's gear. Next round. One, two, three, four, five. Six, surprise, surprise, same makeup. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We could actually go for this one over here and we will. Two and two. So we're thinning our deck radically. We're removing these four cards to get one gear. And we get the Exotic Herbs, which is a really, really good card. Oh, sorry, this one is also a Roaming Minion. Now we get into trouble already because I would really love to get this card. But if I play with my newly found rules, they will actually swallow it. So, yeah, I can see already why this is a problem. But here we are. I made this decision. This one moves into the shadows. Shadow Track reaches 10. You're done. This one eats the Exotic Herbs. And we get one card here and one card here. We open them. Lightning Strike. Okay, so these two go away immediately. This Lightning Strike enters the shadows. This one is revealed. It's a roaming minion. One, two, two, four, six. <clears throat> these ones are destroyed. The plague rats, unless I get them next time around, will also move into the shadows. So then the shadow will be at uh, three already. So that's annoying. Oh yeah, this one is also roaming. It moves the lightning strike. Oh no, it actually eats it because that's an event so it gets destroyed. And this one is, oh, roaming. Yeah, as you can see, um, I will probably stop doing this house rule straight away because that's going to be terrible. One, two, three, four, five, six cards. Let's see what we've got. <clears throat> Um, so we're going to remove the plague rats and we have the covered bridge. So we have four, five, six, seven, bite. Yeah, why not? We're gonna <clears throat> get the Vengeful Spirit for four. And we also need to pay Strength of Spirit, which gets destroyed in the process. Hunting Party. We can't do anything else with this. But we do have three fight, which we're going to use to get some brilliant deductions. We're gonna get a training card for this. 
everything else goes away and I will not now use the rule that I just made up because it's actually going to I mean there's a reason probably why they didn't do it this way so this one moves here and this one moves here so here we are <clears throat> and we draw four cards and then the rest get shuffled One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see what we've got. Um, four, five. Six, fight, and one, two cunning, and one spirit. Okay, for the two cunning, first of all, we're going to get um, the plague rats. A uh, ghostly minion. Yeah. There's nothing really we can do, but we get six, so we can go training twice. We're gonna draw two training cards, end our turn. This roaming minion moves one further. One, two, three, four, five, six cards. Four, Okay, let's see. First of all, we need to um, see what we've got. Um, mm -hmm. We've got five, six. Yeah, that should be fairly easy to decide. Two, four, five buys us the hunting party. So we've got uh, three fight left. Okay, that's all we're going to do. So we're going to buy a training card. We're going to get a intuition. Okay, so that's all that's going to happen. We put this away. We're now going to move the hunting minion, the roaming minion, the ghost pirates, which is actually a really good card, which we would love to acquire. But we can't. Oh, and this one, no, this one doesn't move. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Two, four, six, eight. Let's see. Um, Yeah, there isn't really anything we want to do, so we're gonna buy two, four, we're gonna buy three training cards and end our turn. We're gonna move the roaming pirates to the final 
part from the line. So next up they will, unless we get them, which I would love to, they will end up in the shadows. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, no chance. Not a snowball's chance in hell. Yeah. Okay, there isn't really anything we can do that is meaningful. Except by training cards. Two, six, eight. That means we can get two, so we're gonna get two training cards for this one. And this one ends up in the shadows. It gets replaced with a book of death, which costs eight. One, two, three, four, five. enough again to attack the villain but we're going to get the oh, are we going to get the covered bridge yeah we're gonna get the Yeah, no, we're actually going to get the skeleton key, which allows us to um, get uh, three cards and then destroy it. And it's replaced by an outlaw, something that we can't do anything about. So we're also going to take another training card. So let's keep moving. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got... Five, six, five cards. We've got four. Mm -hmm. That is actually enough to attack the villain. But he would also eat all of our cards, which is not necessarily what we want. Um. What we're going to do is we're going to, to buy the covered bridge. So we still have three, five, one, and which means we can attack the hungry dead, but we actually don't want this. Yeah. We're going to attack the outlaw minion and we get to draw two cards as a result. And we put out the lightning strike which destroys the poltergeist and goes into the shadows. So we replace this card and this card and let's see. Um, we drew two cards which is actually not too bad because now we have Still one fight left, one spirit, six cunning. So we've got two fight left and six cunning. And we're going to invest three of those cunnings in the smugglers, which is a roaming. monster so we are rid of this one and that's really all we are going to do and that's the end of our turn one two three four five six okay 
tube. We are allowed to take one ally from our hands. Okay, first, what would we like to do? Because the problem, no, we don't really want to do this. So I'm going to destroy my start card and I'm going to get the cursed key. Aha! Now, that is a good card. Let's see, I may take an ally from my discard pile into my hand. Um, yes, and I'm going to take this, oops, I'm going to take this ally, Dr. Edwards. And I'm going to spend Dr. Edwards, the Playgrounds and Brilliant Deduction on Delaney, who's a really good ally. Um, and that's really all we can do at the moment. Yeah, so we are going to draw a, we're gonna spend three to get a training card. Here we've got a roaming minion who's gonna move. And now we have, we draw two cards. Three, four, five, six. So let's see what we've got. Um, okay. We're going to attack the villain for three. Every other hero must roll the omen die if, um, okay. Okay, nothing happens because uh, since there is no other hero, it would be me. Okay, so we're now going to attack this Drigoy vampire. <clears throat> From distant Europe, this creature has come to the new world in search of opportunity. It's got four fight and three and three um, spirit. Now I'm going to attack it using the key because that gets destroyed when it gets played. That's gonna make up three out of the four for the for the fight. Then I'm going to use the Vengeful Spirit, which is a card which has kind of like a side effect, which is unpleasant. Um, or which can be unpleasant for me, so I really would not want to have this card too long. So that's gonna make up one more um, of the fight dice. And then we have what, the two training card and the one from here. And these are all going to be destroyed because of the special ability of the streak or vampire, which means all of these cards are cursed. Otherwise, only this one would go, but in this case, all go. But that doesn't really matter. Every hero may acquire a training card without paying its cost. And I am going to acquire a intuitive hunch. Um, So this goes into my discard pile. I have beaten the first villain, so we're now going to see who the next villain is. And it's the Dark Rider of Sullen Grove, also known as Sleepy Hollow. Every hero must acquire a dark secret. So we're going to take a dark secret, put it in our discard pile. These cards are simply normal cards, which, you, which all have the same text. And then you have to get a shocking discovery when this comes up. So let's see, I've got... Um, 
these cards left. Sorry, I shouldn't have turned over the uh, the, the the villain just uh, the the new villain just yet. Let's see, can I do anything with these cards? And I actually can. I can use this to get one more training, and I'm gonna get a tactical card. So now. This roaming ghost goes into the shadows. So now we've got five shadow cards, so we're going to put this over here. Um, and we get Reverend Harding. That's actually a really strong town elder that I would love to have on my team. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now let's see if we can get Reverend Harding. To join us. I may take an ally from my hand, from my discard pile into my hand. The problem is I don't have any. It's a, that's a shame. Actually, I can get him. Yeah. Three, five, and this one gets destroyed. And I get this Reverend Harding. Now we have two, two, two left. Let's see what we get. Oh, great. She's gonna roam. Brill. Um, nothing really that we can do, except we're going to get a tactical strike. This one goes into the shadows. God house. Every hero may acquire a tactical strike and place it on top of their deck. Done. One, two, three, four, five, six. One of these will be a tactical strike. <clears throat> Here we are. Two, four, six, eight. Okay. The Dark Rider of Sullen Grove has eight fight and two spirit. Okay. Yeah, why not? We're going to... So, let's see what we're going to do. Um, actually, I don't want to buy any of these cards. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to actually attack the Hungry Dead. No, I can't. Okay, so I'm just gonna buy three training cards and end my turn. And we're gonna draw six more cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see what we've got. One, two, one, six, four. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, we can we can draw another card because we've got the smugglers. Okay. Well, this is much of nothing. We are going to destroy the guardhouse, um, attacking the uh, hungry dead, just so that something gets moving, because the center line is pretty much dead. And we get a feral kin, which we can't acquire either. Okay, so we're just going to make more space. We're going to take the vengeful spirit. 
uh, which means we have to get rid of one of our intuitive strike, but that's fine. Which means we still have these left. Poltergeist. The hero must pass one card from the hand to the hero on the left. Um, yeah, I really don't want to acquire this card, so we're just going to leave it as is and we're going to get a tactical strike instead. And let's see what happens. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, dark secret. Put this away, it gets destroyed. Uh, we get to draw two of these shocking uh, secrets. Um, the power of evil. Place this card next to the current villain. If the villain is defeated, discard this card. All gear costs plus one cunning. All allies cost plus one spirit. We're gonna take this because he reduces the cost for, for allies anyway, so then that's kind of canceled out. Let's see what we've got. Um, we're going to put this one in play, which means we can protect a card. And um, this one, well, we've got... Okay, we're going to destroy the skeleton key to draw three cards. One, two, three. Well, that's nothing. Okay, we're gonna... Yeah, we're going to get the masked assassin. Gonna put this in here. Which doesn't do anything for us. And we're gonna move on. Two, three, four, five, six. Now that's what we want. Okay, so first of all, we're going to use Reverend. Harding's ability. We're gonna roll for two cards that we select. I'm going to select spread out and I'm going to select feral kin. So I'm gonna turn them sideways so that we know what I've selected. Now I'm gonna roll the omen die. On a five or six or rather on a on a skull, I get to take this card. This one is out because we rolled a two and this one is one so nothing happens. So okay we played this card. This is this is a strong ability actually. So we've got two to Brishner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of this training card and we're just gonna. Oh, should we take this one actually? No, actually, we're going to. Oh, every hero must destroy a card in their discard pile. I forgot when we got this one that I should have done that. Let's take a card from our discard pile and we're going to discard the outlaw. So we're going to buy this card spread out um, for two and one. Um, and that's all we can do. So we're just going to put this away and we're not gonna buy any more training cards We've got enough one two three four five six okay that is too bad oh, this is really 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 bad okay first we are going to get the poltergeist. No, first of all, we're going to get the wooden barricades out of the way. 
Let's see what we draw instead. The Scarlet Shadow. Um, we're going to attack the Book of the Dead of Death and replace it. And we get the Book of the Occult. Ah, so what? Um, we take the Poltergeist. We would have to get rid of a card for this one, which we just simply go are going to discard. And so we're going to discard the uh, Covered Bridge for this. And we have the Brigands which we can't take, but they will roam. They're a good card, we want that card. Maybe next time. Just to get some movement here in the center line. One, three. Yeah, okay, the brigands are ours. Six. Okay, so first of all, we're going to play these. And we don't roll a skull, so we don't have to destroy the top card of our um, draw deck, so that's good. And we're gonna get the brigands for this. Then we're going to um, draw a card. Oh, look. That's an interesting card. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to buy the Charmed Relic instead, which means we have all but exhausted our monies. going to get the Book of the Occult. And we're going to get the Wooden Barricades. And we're also going to draw a card. Which gives us four gear. And we're going to roll a die. And we're going to have to destroy four cards, but we're going to acquire the Feral Kin. And we're going to destroy one, two, three, four. Thinning the deck nicely. Um, one could have argued, why did you choose this one, which is two, over this one, which is one. This allows me to draw a card, the other one doesn't. Lucy's Diary. Roll the Omen die. You may draw cards equal to the roll. If a skull is rolled, draw the top card from the main deck and add it to the shadows. Wow, that's nice. One, whoever Lucy may be. So let's see what we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do we have enough to kill the villain? Two, four, six, eight, me thinks. Yes, two, four, six, eight, plus two, that's enough. Every hero may destroy up to two cards from their hand or discard pile. We don't have any, but we're gonna kill this Dark Rider of Sullen Grove. So, great. Um, let's see what what's next and it's the Weatherstone gargoyle global anytime a hero rolls a skull on the omen die add the top card of the main deck to the shadows Ugh. 
Okay, the Weatherstone Gargoyle, four, four, and four. Let's draw one, two, three, four, five, six cards. This one remains in play and it helps us to, dis to protect a card from being destroyed. Uh-huh. So first of all, we're going to get the militia soldier. We're going to get Lucy's diary for one. One green, one blue, and two, three more green. Dive and roll. That's a good card too. I actually love this card because you can you can Uh, you can uh, gain one fight and destroy a card in the center line, and that can be any card. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see what we've got. This one goes, it's a location, it remains in play. Discard to gain two fight toward fighting a mi minion or villain. Um... Okay, so we've got four fight. And for this, we're going to acquire the militia soldier and dive and roll. We're going to get the dank seller, leaving us with three. We're not going to play this card, oh, and we're going to play this card. Oh, we're going to get a dark secret. Well, of course we do. Okay, so we have three left, and we can't do anything with that. But so far, so good. One, two, three, four. Five, six, plus one card. Draw one card. Let's see what we've got. Um, that is too bad. Because we would have four. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so now we're going to, first of all, use our ability of choosing people from the center line. Harlow Morgan is ours. Dr. Manning is ours. That's a very powerful card because it allows you to reduce the cards in the shadow. So this card has been played. Let's see what we have. We're going to get the town key allows us to remove a card from the shadows. We are going to um, get Magistrate Croft destroying this card in the process. And that's all we're going to do. One. Two, three, four, five, six. First, we're going to roll the omen die. Zero. 
this remains in play. We are going to draw another card. Remains in play. Um, okay, now let's let's see. The Weatherstone Gargoyle has four has twelve hit points, but it says all of them are red. Uh, all of them are grey. So we could, in theory, have twelve fight or twelve of any color of any one color even. So here we've got four. Yeah, not enough, but okay. We're going to buy wooden barracks. It's always good to buy barracks. Oh my word. A roaming minion, and we can't do anything about it. This one will end up in the shadows. My apologies, one of these wooden barracks should have ended up in the discard pile. So at the moment we've got in play the covered bridge, which protects a card. And okay. Two, three, four, five. So we have four reds anyway. So that would be the first one. If we could now get even just eight more reds. That would actually solve our problem. Let's see. One, two, so it's now six cards. Okay, let's see. I think we may be able to kill the villain. Okay, so let's see. Um, First we get to draw another card. Okay. Yeah, I think that should be enough. We have four red from the wooden barricades. Takes care of four. We have four blue, which takes care of the second four. Plus we have two four, another four red. Plus we would get two from Two of any color from Delaney, which we could, which could also be red. They could also be green because we've got three greens. They could also be, yeah, blue because we've got two blue. So we have actually won this game. So I have to say that I haven't lost a single game. Um, as you saw in the beginning, my house rule, um, which meant that essentially um, they would uh, a roaming. Um, enemy would, would kill everything that isn't a, um, a minion in the center line actually gave me great problems. Having said this, it could well be that considering towards the end there were hardly or there were no roaming enemies, this would not have made such a big difference. So um, it's something that I would have to play test a little more um, because obviously um, it also depends on, sorry, that's a training card. It also depends on the amount of um, of these cards and when they actually appear in the game. So um, it could well be that it does work um, and that you could play it so that it eats up every single thing that ends up in its way. Um, It might very well work. I don't know. I would have to test this more. And um, now I have, I think, played 10 games. And I have to say that it is charmingly simple. The game itself is charmingly simple. It's very easy to learn. And um, but 
I'm already looking forward to receiving um, the base game because this is of course a standalone expansion as I said earlier and I'm really looking forward to to playing this game more and to getting more cards because obviously you know this deck is is actually um, rather small I think the deck itself has something like 68 cards no that can't be that can't be right how many cards does it have um, 72 card main deck well it's not far off anyway um, but I think it is quite easy. Um, it could be because I only play with one hero. Um, but then again, these these um, uh, fight your fight your neighbor cards that are in there are not really that um, disruptive either because they usually just affect every other player. So since I am actually penalizing myself and since I'm actually um, uh, throwing them at me as well. Um, I, I should be at more of a disadvantage. Um, there could be an argument made for saying, okay, if you play on your own, you can't buy as many training cards. You could say that basically there is one for each um, available, or maybe two for each um, for each category, rather than all of the ones, because obviously you're not um, in... Um, you're not really playing against anyone who might buy, be buying them up um, in front of you and might leave you um, with without the possibility of, of, of acquiring them. So one could maybe say, okay, um, uh, this is the number of training cards that is available um, in a multiplayer game, up to four players, I think, are supported by this game. Um, So, uh, one could then make an argument and say, okay, in a four player game, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it could be that you could you could make an argument for saying okay um, each player only gets a maximum of two of these to buy, which could be um, a good way of of actually limiting your ability um, of maxing out on training cards which are always available. So. Um, but then also saying, you know, they might not get destroyed and sent into the crypt, but they get put back into the training area so that you could buy them later on. I mean, this would be one way, I guess, of, of maybe limiting, limiting this and not going um, overboard with training cards. Because um, as you can see um, from the video, I, I bought quite a lot of those. Um, Again, this is something that I would have to check to see um, how that would maybe influence the game, make it harder or make it even maybe unplayable or unwinnable rather. Um, so I'm going to do this now, but I think um, I've shown you a little bit of how this game plays. Um, I have to say I really like it. Um, I think it's a really good deck builder for what it's worth um, in terms of it's simple, it's um, not like a very complicated game. So we're now going to take, I've never played with this guy actually. Um, and I think it's, it's just, um, Um, it's just a nice pastime. Um, there are um, other games, other game supplements out there, which I don't know what they contain. I read somewhere that some people felt that um, actually they were not as um, as well designed 
in terms of playing together so it was more like you know did they really play this this enough and um, of course I don't know if they did I just hope they did but some people said yeah it's too it's actually too um, too diluted if you if you put all of the decks together this is always a problem or this can be a problem when you put expansions into um, into a game but yeah I suppose um, it really depends on your on how important um, mechanics are for you because I think the theme will not really be diluted but I think that the mechanics might be. So the, the, the lightning strike that I showed you is actually new to this expansion. It doesn't exist in the original one. Now there are four lightning strikes in, in a deck of 72. If you were to mix them all up, you would have a deck in excess of 200 cards and then only four lightning strikes. That would really dilute them. I don't know how many roaming minions are in there, but this is also a new mechanic. So put it in with the old one, you might end up with um, very few roaming. Um, and they might not actually make any difference. So the idea possibly of getting them to eat up everything that is there might actually be um, the right way of doing this. So um, I hope you found this entertaining and interesting. Um, if you want my opinion, I can definitely recommend this game if you want a deck builder that is, I mean, look at this. This is, um, you could probably put the base game when I get it into here as well and it would fit nicely. This this compartment I'm not using at all. So, um, uh, and there is still, there is still uh, space here. And even when you just put in the base deck, there is still space here. So um, even these two compartments aren't fully used. So um, it fits nicely into a box. Um, I really like the die as well. The artwork is, Familiar to anyone who's played Flying Frog games, um, uh, Touch of Evil. I didn't like Touch of Evil. I do like this game, so I guess that's a good thing. Um, and I wish you a pleasant uh, Sunday afternoon. Bye-bye.